Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you're welcome to subscribe, you're welcome to share. You can click the thumbs up if you like what I talk about, or you can put the thumbs down if you disapprove. Whatever, the choice is yours. Um, today I wanted to talk about, for the last time, um, the election, but without kind of digging out the dirt and without trying to take sides. Um, and I thought I would focus on character because character is what takes people. It's how you identify the person. What type of person do you want to lead the country? What character does he have or she have? And so I thought I would start off very lightheartedly and talk about their astrological signs. Now, Jeremy Corbyn is a Taurian. What are the traits of a Taurian? Taurians are honest, reliable, persistent, patient, generous, kind and tolerant. The negative side, however, <coughs> sorry, the negative side is that they're stubborn they worry about appearances, they can be materialistic, and they don't like change. So that is Jeremy Corbyn. Um, then we have Boris Johnson. I'm not going to talk about the other ones because these two are the main contenders. Boris Johnson, Gemini. Charming, flirtatious, quick-witted, intellectual, funny, enthusiastic, and versatile. In other words, he's almost opposite to Jeremy Corbyn. Um, the negative side of a uh, Gemini is that they're indecisive, they're impulsive, um, bad decision-making skills, they lack seriousness and lack direction. So I'll put the source of where I got um, these traits from. But, you know, by and large, going through most of the astrological traits and the signs for these two, they more or less came up with the same thing. So those are the characteristics um, of our both, both potential leaders. OK, um, then we have to think about... Um, with um, Boris Johnson, he constantly refers to how Labour put the country in debt, um, how the rabbi it does, is fearful for his um, community if Jeremy Corbyn gets in power. And there is another thing he talks about, you know, when he's in disrepute of Jeremy Corbyn. Um, can't think of it now. Okay, and then we have, um, what is Boris Johnson offering? Boris Johnson says we have a fantastic deal. Zero tariffs, zero quota, taking control of our laws and our country, which allow British businesses perfect confidence in the way we leave the EU. And he talks about exact regulatory frameworks, which to me means no, nothing to the average John Joe. I think when you're talking to the people, you have to speak in their language so that they understand exactly what you mean. But I think some people, they, um, especially those who are quite posh, they tend to speak to who they're used to speaking to, basically. And they're not really in touch with the people on the ground. So when he speaks, it's, you know, and I notice when he speaks, it's quite aloof. It's, it lacks humanity. Um, but I guess, you know, if you listen to the actual words, he'll use phrases like, oh, that guy, when he was talking about Usman Khan, and he'll use, um, you know, some other flippant phrases that shows, I'm not saying he has to call Usman Khan Usman Khan, but the phraseology lacks humanity. It's, all, it's quite flippant. So um, we have that. Um, let me see. So 
so we have the leaked document that they're now saying is fake news. Um, I'll leave it up to you whether you believe it's fake or not, but apparently it references the NHS. It says that there will be charges, uh, there will be customs checks and restrictions on trade between Britain and Northern Ireland. So that is what the, um, the, the document that was leaked actually says. And apparently it's made four references to the NHS. And even though it's only four, apparently they are quite significant. So, I mean, whether or not, we have to kind of think, how did we know in the first place? How did we get that kind of itchy feet about the NHS? We got itchy feet because Trump slipped up and told us it was on the table. And since then, it's been, I guess, Jeremy Corbyn, worried about it, has been trying to find out whether or not it's true. Now, I believe that they're bound to try and um, obfuscate the truth with, as far as the NHS is concerned. I mean, but then you have to remember, the Americans are our allies and they've already threatened to withdraw certain um, privileges if we don't comply. So, even though Boris Johnson can say, maybe with his hand on his heart, that um, NHS is not on the table, do we really have a choice if we're up against the Americans and you are favouring the Americans and they are your closest allies? Are you going to go against them? Because remember, America wasn't happy when Theresa May, um, with her, her Brexit deal, they weren't happy. So you have to kind of think, what power does US have over England? And you have to take that out of, that you have to put that into the equation as well. It's not just about two individuals. It's about two individuals. Well, there's more than two, but I'm just talking about Corbyn and Johnson. It is about two individuals who, for whatever reason, want to win the election. Now, what we need to decide is who do we want to put our faith in? Who do we want to trust? Who do we feel we can trust? And then you have to, if you go back and even if you Google um, you know, suppose you put the lies that Boris Johnson has told. You can find about 43, but there again, are they lies worth thinking about? Are they lies worth giving much consideration to? How, how bad are they on his character? That depends on you as an individual. That depends on your own morality. It depends on how you view character. So what might be serious to one person might not be serious to another. Now, I'm not talking about all his, you know, his relationships with women and that kind of stuff and his racist um, satire. I'm talking about character now. What kind of lies has he told that will, you know, make you question his character? And I'm going to tell you a couple of them in a moment. Now, we have... Um, on the other hand, we have Jeremy Corbyn. He's mostly being beaten up about the anti-Semitism remark or whatever it was he said about um, anti-Semitism, which he says is his, his um, party is not divisive at all. And the people who made that remark have been uh, under inquiry and they are out of the um, out of his jurisdiction, so to speak, they are being inquired into. So let's deal with the two men instead of dealing with people that they cannot control, because you cannot control everybody in your group. You cannot control what people say. I mean, they do have an allegiance to their parties, but sometimes you cannot control what they say. So you have to ask yourself, OK, what's on, what a third party says? Does that take away the credibility of these two potential leaders? You have to ask yourself that question. Um, Boris avoids committing to the fantastic trade deal. 
Now, let me go back to this. Boris says we're coming out with a fantastic deal if we can get a majority, a working majority. I don't know if that's a big if or a small if, but the if is there. Um, Corbyn says Boris will walk out of a relationship with the EU and into a relationship with nobody. I believe he'll walk out of a relationship with the EU, but he'll walk into a relationship with the United States to our detriment. So, only because the thing is with the US, they want to they want to take the food labels off, they want to lower the quality, and they don't want to do anything that's going to affect sales. So, you know, you have these health warnings on food, they want to take that off. They don't want us to have any health warnings because apparently it, it reduces sales. So these when you're aligning yourself with somebody, you have to kind of think to yourself, how important how important is that to you? One second, please. Sorry about that. If there's not one interruption, there's another, isn't there? But sorry about that. I didn't take it off. That's just reminding me I've got to update my sat nav. I'm going somewhere where I don't know where I'm going, so I need to update my sat nav. So that was a reminder that I forgot to take off. So forgive me for that. Um, Boris avoids committing to a fantastic trade deal. He says about a deal, but he doesn't include the word trade. And what we have to sometimes look at is the words that are missing. Not what is being said, but what is not being said. And you'll find that with politicians. They're great at not, at, you know, is it lying by omission? Yeah, I think that is how they would word it. But they're very good at that. You know, their, their key goal is to be elected. And as much as they swear and say, Oh, you know, this isn't going to happen. The NHS isn't on the table. Oh, I'm going to leave if uh, I'm, there's no way there's going to be an extension. I'll, you know, I'll drop in a ditch before I do that. And then they change their minds and then they say something else. All polit politicians do that. But we have to kind of think that when they're making promises, how important is that promise to you? Whatever they're promising. I mean, I was listening to Boris Johnson today and he was saying to Jeremy Corbyn that he's not um, giving his um, opinion. He's quite neutral about Brexit and he's not letting us know what the deal is. But the fact is, the majority of us don't bloody care. The majority of people just want roof over their head. They want affordable rent. They want to be able to take their kids to school. They want to have a job. They want employment. That's what they want a home. They don't they want affordable food. They want basic stuff. Brexit, whether if it if it stays as it is, it's not going to make a difference to those people because it's going to be stay the same. So Brexit, why would Brexit be on the top of Corbyn's agenda if he knows that the people are more concerned about practical matters? But you see, with Boris Johnson, that is the key issue. And they're, for, and they're getting the election mixed up with a Brexit election and a general election, even though they're both linked to a, to a degree. So, um, Boris also says, there will be perfect congruence in the way British businesses leave the EU and equivalence with zero tariffs, zero quota, exact regulatory framework. And we will have ample time to get on to build a new free trade partnership, not just with the EU, but with countries around the world. What does that mean to an ordinary person like me and you? What does it mean? Does it mean squat to us? And I think, you know, when you're talking to people, you have to speak in their language. He's not speaking in our language. Well, he's not speaking in my language. He might be speaking in 
a lot of people's language, but that's not really my language. I like basic stuff. And a lot of times when I do these videos, it is to simplify things. It's to make things easy. It's so that the man on the ground kind of understands what's going on. Um, what else is there that's important? Um, yeah, I noticed today I was watching the BBC debate, you know, the question and answer. And I noticed how Boris cleverly switches any criticism of himself by repeating the anti-Semitism and um, question and how Jeremy Corbyn campaigned to break the union between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The thing is, is that, you know, you keep going over old ground. What we want to know is what is current. And if, um, just, you know, if Jeremy Corbyn did advocate or campaign against um, the breaking the union between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, how do we know that wasn't years ago? People change, things change, but you harp on about the same thing and then you're not kind of addressing what people want to know, which is what is happening now. What, what are people going to get now? The rich don't want Labour in because it's going to cost them. They'd prefer to cost us. That's the, that is basically the truth. And like I said, depending on where you're sitting, if you're, if you're well off, you are going to want um, a Tory government. You are going to, you're not going to care whether or not the NHS is on the table because you'll be able to buy your own private health care. And all of these other things that um, Boris Johnson is talking about, it won't really matter because you're set. But it will matter to the people who are on universal credit. I know that the system doesn't want people like that. They don't want the poor in their country. They don't want foreigners in their country. But the funny thing is, is that on the one hand, um, Boris is saying, we're going to control immigration. And on the other hand, he's saying, oh, well, we're going to get 31,000 nurses and we're going to use the um, Australian point system. And we are going to get uh, 31,000 nurses, even if we have to recruit abroad. So what is that telling you? Either you're going to reduce immigration or you're not. How can you say you're going to reduce immigration and then you're talking about you're going to bring over 31 foreign nurses? It doesn't make sense. And that's what you have to look at. You have to look at who is, who is speaking the truth. At, well, as far as the truth can be spoken. Because you have to remember we're dealing with politicians. And politicians have a reputation of lying. But who is the most credible? Who does your heart kind of gravitate towards? That is, that is the question. Because they can put down some convincing arguments. But it all depends on whether you want somebody who is humane or somebody who is inhumane. Most people who are rich, they, they didn't get rich by having the human touch. You know, they do have to be quite clinical. They do have to be quite cold and mercenary because that's what makes them rich a lot of the time. So people, people, people pleasers, or not even people pleasers, but pe people who um, think about people and feelings and what that person is going through and that person, they're not going to make money. And it probably will cost the government money because to put things right, and what is sad is that, you know, the world, the, the UK is in a mess. But what will happen is, you get, you bet your bottom dollar, uh, Corbyn, if he was to win, he is going to have, inherit a mass debt. A couple of years down the line, they're going to blame Corbyn for that debt because what um, Corbyn will probably have to do is to in, to increase that debt to put things relatively on a on a level playing field, if that is possible. We do not know. So, um, yeah, let me think if there's anything more important that about their characters. Um, <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, you know what was interesting? Um, where did I put that? I've got so much bits of paper, it's unbelievable. Because this is quite a, it's quite a heavy topic. I did try to kind of condense it. But there was something about, um, there was a question, one of the um, audience answered a question about um, hate in politics. How are they going to reduce hate in politics? And um, Boris Johnson said, oh, you know, any, anybody they find um, guilty of any kind of racist comments or um, hate politics, he reckons um, that what they are doing in his party is having an independent inquiry into anyone who is guilty of any such offence. And they are, the fir they are out first bounce if they're guilty. This is of hate, um, hate in politics, you know, anything to do with racism or anything like that. But he's the one that talked about Muslim women and their boxes. You know what I mean? And you kind of think, where is the congruence there? Where is the consistency with what he's saying and what his actions are doing? He also retweeted, apparently, Tommy Robinson's references. Um, and... Um, then he switches once again to Labour, where the rabbi says he fears for his community if the country where Mr. Cor if Mr. Corbyn were to get elected, um, and that's his whipping stick that he pulls out any time he gets pushed in a corner. You know, that's what he comes back and throws back the same old thing. So you have to kind of watch those tactics when they're talking. We've only got what a couple of days. You've only got a couple of days, so these aren't votes that you have to take lightly this time. But all I'm saying, I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm just saying, you know, just look at the character. Look at the history. Because nobody can know who to vote for. Nobody can tell you who to vote for. You know, you just have to find out for yourself who resonates with you most. Who, can, who is more believable? Who do you think, depending on who's watching this, who do you think has got your interest in heart? Like I said, if you're rich, you probably will um, lean towards Boris Johnson. And if you're middle class or poor, you might lean to either the Lib Dems or the Scottish Party or Labour or any of the other ones. I'm not quite sure where the Brexit Party stands. Um, apparently they're going to change their... Um, named to the Reform Party if they don't win any seats. But, you know, it's this isn't a game. You know, you know, this is our lives. And, you know, it's not like we're all in a playing a playground where you can just push us on the seesaw and bounce us up and down or push us on the swing and hope you don't push us over the other side. This is our lives that you're talking about. So it really is... Um, it really is important. I just wanted to say, um, Corbyn, I'm just going to tell you the two things that Corbyn said in uh, their opening statement, Corbyn and Boris. Corbyn said they want to create real opportunities, supported and secure dignity in old age. They want four million children who are in poverty to, be, to come out of poverty. They want more appointments for GPs. They want to help struggling families. They want to save the NHS. They want free personal care for older persons, free education for all, and the broader shoulders pay more in tax. That is Corbyn. Boris, he says, we can get Brexit done with one nation, conservative government. We can end paralysis. We can transform our country with massive investments. 50,000 more nurses, um, more funding for every school, 20,000 more police. Once again, you know, um, 20,000 more police. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. Spread opportunities fairly by, who's percent? No, that's my little bit. Fantastic infrastructure, education and technology. So you can see the two um, opening statements. One has a more humane element and one has a more, you know, clinical element. Um, yeah, um, I think, you know, I was going to go into all the lies Boris told, but I'm not going to. 
I think you know if you know if you're following up on this, you know the lies that they've told you, you know the things that affect their character. So I'm not going to repeat anything that might discredit them or affect their character. I think that is for you to decide on to as to whether it is important to you. And I am going to end that here. That's all for now. Bye-bye.